how long have you been working with the campaign? Uh, about a year and a half, two years. Um, we started uh, working on the first referendum after it had already been written and submitted. Uh, and our firm has done everything from representing uh, some of the environmental groups or guides or other folks involved in the lawsuits to representing the PACs and all the other different groups involved. So we've, we've been involved heavily in pretty much everything from the beginning. So walk me through that process of from referendum question that mm -hmm. people of Maine are, are signing more than a year ago now yep. to what we're seeing on our ballots come uh, this election cycle. What, um, how was that question formulated? So when a ballot question is written, it is written like it is going to be a law. And the same way members of the legislature will come in and they'll submit a law of whatever it's going to be about, it has to fit in with the main statutes and the main laws. So it's, it's in long form, usually several pages. And then the Secretary of State's job is to take that law and put it into a question that's understandable for people so they know what they're voting on without having to look at several pages. That's, mm -hmm. that's essentially how the process works. Okay. Or I guess I'll ask first, you know, what are the goals of question one? What does the campaign, what will happen if yes on one passes? So I might even back up a little further. When a referendum is written, it's supposed to be the, le the people, uh, a ref the purpose of a citizen's referendum is essentially to have the people act as the legislature. So it, it, it's essentially like the people of Maine enacting a law the same way the legislature would. And in this case, uh, it has to have general applicability, so it'll apply to um, you know, that sort of issue. Um, in this case, <clears throat> it, it bans uh, high-impact transmission corridors in the upper Kennebec region. Uh, it requires that the legislature vote on a high impact transmission line, which is essentially a big, massive construction project like this, over 50 miles, large capacity line. Uh, and, and it essentially, it, al it also clarifies, and this is a really important point, it clarifies what the main constitution already says, which is if you are going to have a project in public lands in Maine, you need to have two thirds vote of the legislature. So when you talk about the retroactivity provisions, the reason those are in there is to clarify that that should have applied in this case. The main constitution uh, it says if you are going to sell or convey public lands or substantially alter them, the legislature is supposed to vote. And this is not some new power given to politicians. It's in the main constitution and it's very commonly done. If you talk to any legislature, every session they have several examples where their public lands are going to be conveyed or they're going to do a new project on them or a power line over them, they would vote and typically approve, almost always approve them. Mm -hmm. What happened here, CMP did not want to go to the legislature because they knew they had an unpopular project. It had been rejected in New Hampshire and they were trying to get this through in Maine and they did not go to the legislature. So what, when people are talking about the whole retroactivity piece, it really applies to enforcing, clarifying, and really making it clear that the Maine Constitution applies here. Mm -hmm. I wanna to get to retroactivity in a second, but first, how narrow is this? The language that, as, as I read it, construction of high impact electric transmission lines in the upper Kennebec region. So the legislature is going to have to approve all other such projects anywhere in Maine. So are we just, we're not talking about all construction projects are going to head to the legislature because we know that the legislature doesn't move rapidly all right. the time. So that, that would be an issue. But this is for specifically projects related to high impact electric transmission lines. That's exactly right. And, and that's the big thing when I see a lot of these commercials or a lot of these other things going on people are starting to believe that if they have a, a, they build a deck in their backyard or if there was some past construction project or it's, it, it's not gonna apply, uh, it would apply to them and that's absolutely not correct. 
the only project that I'm aware of that has started in the state of Maine that this referendum would apply to is the CMP corridor. It, it's a massive construction project. High impact uh, transmission lines are not the little lines that run back and forth to your house. They're the massive ones that are sort of the, the transmission highways, so to speak, over 50 miles. Uh, upper Kennebec region, which is a very particular spot just west of 201 and, and Bingham area. Uh, and, um, and it has a, a, a two-thirds vote on public land. So it's a very rare scenario where this would happen. Is this, does this apply to private sector work or, or no. work on private land or is this specifically on public land? The two-thirds vote is strictly on public land. Okay. The majority vote is if there's a massive construction project that goes over 50 miles the legislature needs to vote majority on it, which is, is quite common, frankly, to have uh, the legislature vote on, on massive projects like that. And they should be involved. And one of the reasons this was written in such a way was to get the legislature included. The legislature tried over and over again to be involved in this construction project because they knew it was very unpopular. They had to adjourn because of COVID. And then Post-COVID, the CMP decided to start building quickly because they knew that the legislators wanted to be involved. The only way that we could really remedy that was to start a citizen's referendum. Okay. I want to now t talk about that. that oh, sorry. <laughs> I want to ask about the buzzword, mm -hmm. retroactivity. Um, we've been <clears throat> seeing it all over TV screens. Yes. So, why 2020 and why 2014? So I'll, I'll read this because we're, we're going to air this in long form too. So the, this project is going to need legislature approval by a two-thirds majority, both retroactively to 2020 and to require the legislature retro retroactively to 2014 to approve by a two-thirds vote such projects using public land. So how is 2020 and 2014 significant to the this project? Perfect. And let me say again, the only project retroactively that this is going to affect is the CMP corridor. I can't say that enough, so I just wanted to say that up front. Why 2014? Because that's when they entered into an illegal lease with the state of Maine to try to go through the public lands without the legislature approving it. The Maine Constitution says if you are going to sell, convey, substantially alter public lands in the state of Maine, the legislature has to approve it. This, is, this has been the way uh, in our Constitution for a long time, and it's routinely done. They tried to get around that. So the purpose of writing it as 2014 is to make it unequivocally clear that it applies to the CMP corridor. Nobody else has tried to get around that requirement. The legislature votes on this stuff all the time, except CMP. CMP tried to get around it. That's why it says 2014. And 2020? For the majority vote for 2020, uh, the reason for that <clears throat> is because that's when we submitted the ballot petitions. So if you're going to have retroactivity apply, you've got to put people on notice when you do it. And it, the exact date in 2020 is the exact date we took out the citizens' referendum petitions. And again, that only project that this applies to is the CMP corridor because they're the only ones that we're doing a project that qualifies under that referendum for it. This is the only high impact electric transmission line in the upper Kennebec region. Correct. Okay. Um, I think there is a fear that this sort of law leads to a slippery slope mm -hmm. where other laws are passed retroactively. What do you think of that? I think it's incredibly rare when you have anything enacted retroactively Politicians have the power to do it, absolutely. Uh, it's done rarely because it can be done in examples where you need to clarify existing law. And here the existing law is the main constitution. Nobody misunderstood that in the past. Whenever something was done uh, on public lands, they would always go to the legislature to do it. The reason this is being done retroactively is to call out CMP for improperly doing it to begin with. So if people are concerned that this is going to apply to other projects, empower politicians to do things, it's, it's not the case at all. 
this is this is a situation where you have a company that is not only the the worst rated utility in the country which is saying something really they've received the largest fines for not uh, addressing billing properly for people they hired private investigators to follow ballot petitioners around and now they're being they now they're asking the people of Maine to run the largest construction project in state history and trust us and then they're trying to make themselves as a victim the the amount of the amount of things that would have to happen to have this happen again are, are incredibly rare and hopefully would never happen again but CMP is trying to make people believe that this would apply to all other scenarios that it wouldn't. That does it for this specific question that I have, you know, about breaking down the language. Do you have anything else to add? No, no. Thanks for your time. Thank you.